Tuesday night, the mayor delivered his ninth State of the City address, and he bookended it with the issue that many refer to as ruin porn. It's, of course, more than just a matter of complaining about the pictures. We are watching the metamorphosis of the train station, for example, but that took the deep pockets and long vision of Ford. Can we do it at some of the other massive eyesores of Detroit? Let's talk about it with Nicole Sherrard Freeman, Group Executive for Jobs, Economy, and Detroit for the, uh, Detroit at Work, rather, for the city of Detroit. Richard Hosey is the developer of the Fisher 21 Lofts Project, and Annalise Frank is the City Hall reporter for Crane's Detroit Business Gang. This is the first in-person flashpoint that we've had in two years. So uh, thanks so much for helping us re-pioneer <laughs> what shouldn't be all that unusual, but it's great to see you all in person. Uh, Nicole, let me start with you. It was really interesting to me. The mayor usually takes great pains to not talk about big things first, big splashy projects. He's very disciplined about keeping his focus on neighborhoods. It, 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 it said a lot to me that he started and ended with this big issue of getting some of these hulking structures turned around and off of so many camera and uh, Instagram posts all over the country. Yeah, that's right. I mean, those structures have been in the forefront uh, for those of us who are from and love Detroit uh, for decades. And so it felt right to him to start with the big things that he tackled uh, and to put that front and center. Uh, he talked about seeing, uh, I, I wish I had been standing with him when he was in this art gallery in Washington, D.C., where that was the vision that people were seeing of Detroit, this old, these, this old you know, these crumbling ruins. Uh, that, that was obviously a pretty powerful moment for him. It was. I mean, that's hard stuff. I mean, it's hard to imagine that there are those of us who are entertained um, mm -hmm. by decay and the unfortunate circumstances of others. But it's what motivated him, and it's part of what uh, motivates us in City Hall. Uh, Richard, you're taking on one of these massive projects. I'm thrilled at the, at, at the prospect of it. But this is, uh, the, fish, the old Fisher body plant is a massive uh, ruin at the moment. Um, why is it different? Because we all watched with great hope the Packard plant and for eight years nothing happened. Why does it feel different to you? So I think um, laying out the, the economics, so we always go with figuring out the numbers first and, 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 and seeing if there are certain things that can be um, met, then is this viable? So we, and talk to the bankers and talk to the state and the city and figure out a plan. And then we go and, and look at the structure to make sure and the environmentals. So it's in a great area, um, but also we, we took cues from all around the country of what works. And so we're always looking for new solutions and applying them to right here in Detroit. It was always explained to me that one of the reasons why more things like this don't happen and why it took so long with the train say it's really difficult to amortize what it costs you to fix up some just the environmental cleanup alone but then finding something to put into those structures that pays for all it took to bring it back to life right but you think you've uh, the, the math here works obviously or you wouldn't be doing it <laughs> absolutely absolutely and and so one thing is we're deep into a, a period where people now believe that people will live in the city of Detroit. You know, if you look back 10 years, people said, could you ever feel something like the Broderick Tower? Um, now, mm -hmm. now we know people will live yeah. here, so you have this stable concept of what will work, and you build around that. Annalise, you can forgive, though, some Detroiters whose eyes roll when they hear about plans for a big turnaround project like these because of things like Packard, Packard plants, just one of them, but the city suing now Fernando Palazuelo, who has held that and not done very much with it over all this time. There's fatigue here, isn't there, on some of these big projects that some of which never quite come to come through. Yes, yeah, I think that, you know, there is sort of a natural aspect of skepticism for, for some of this. And, and, you know, of course, the, the mayor uh, on Wednesday highlighted the, the Packard plant and, and, as you said, is, is suing to uh, get the rights to demolish that. And as they say, you know, hopefully uh, have the current owner of the Packard plant put the bill. But there were a lot of uh, promises made there and, you know, signs that are sort of they had been up at the site and are sort of deteriorating now. Um, so, so yeah, there it's and it's you know it's a massive plant. I mean, I think the the roof is like two acres, right? There's, yeah. I mean, there's so yeah. much. Uh, I don't talk about a roof in terms of acres. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's giant. So, so, so I think you know, and, and certainly you know, as at Cranes looking at the numbers, you know, that's something that that will continue to follow, but. 
Um, you know, the, the mayor certainly laid out, uh, you know, a number of projects. He, you know, he had these 12 sort of ruins, quote unquote, <laughs> yeah. and you know, with, with the Packard plant being the 12 and, and the 11 leading up to that, you know, including the train station and um, Lee Plaza, which is a, uh, a, a tower uh, that's going to um, be renovated into senior housing and market rate housing. Um, so he, he was showing, you know, his track record, track record during his administration on those projects. And yeah. some, some of those have been delayed. And, and there are, mm -hmm. you know, some skepticism on some of those being finished. But, but he is really trying to show that progress has been made on these. It's not, Nicole, just it's obviously we have had, we've had COVID delays have created sort of a, this weird gap of two years. But there's also this concern now about how COVID changes our lives going forward, one of which is where people want to live and do they have to commute to work? Uh, if people are not gonna necessarily have to go to work in the numbers that they used to, how does that change your job and the outlook for these projects we're talking about? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, uh, we believe that if the patterns continue to hold and there are more residents who work from home, mm -hmm. that just makes projects like Fisher Body 21 or the Fisher Lofts all mm -hmm. the more important because where you live, and work and play could potentially all be the same place. So thinking about how do you repurpose uh, existing commercial space, how do you repurpose industrial space to fit the new uh, dynamic is, is top of mind for the mayor and the administration. So you don't think that it, the, the dynamic changes away from city living necessarily just because people don't have to go to a job that's in the city? I don't. Um, I believe that we will rethink in, a, in its entirety uh, how each of us frames where we live and where we work. And quite frankly, there are so many amenities uh, taking shape in downtown Detroit. Downtown Detroit's a beautiful place and is becoming yeah. more beautiful, and I think it'll be more attractive. Uh, Richard, the mayor also took great pains to talk about what uh, the minority ownership picture and the involvement uh, of this. This is, uh, reg I know, must register strongly and profoundly with you mm -hmm. um, it, it's been a massive problem for many many years is it changing so it, it's changing slowly we're identifying the, the barriers and removing them as as we can uh, with the help of the city particularly and um, and and there's programs out there capital impact has a program that uh, is designed to train um, uh, people of color who mm -hmm already have some experience but want to get uh, deeper into commercial development and then one of the wonderful things we have here in Detroit which I have an experience elsewhere is uh, really collaboration and solution uh, sharing for uh, amongst developers and so we're just extending that to to everyone regardless of race and, and the like and, and finding out the ways that we can make all of these people have a better uh, opportunity. And Lisa, I apologize, I've only got about 30 seconds left, but what was, what was your other biggest takeaway from the mayor's address? The other, I talked about the bookends being this issue. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway from what the mayor talked about the other night? Yeah, another huge focus was uh, jobs and training, um, talking about 13,000 open positions at Detroit at Work, which is um, uh, you know, in Nicole's purview and uh, a major plank for the mayor, and you know, the challenge will be um, getting those jobs to to people who need them, and and of course uh, getting uh, middle wage jobs uh, and uh, the ability to you know, enter the the middle class and paying people while they train, which will will That's obviously right. be uh, watching <laughs> that very closely. Gang, so great to see you in person. I got to take another quick commercial break. Back with more on Flashpoint right after this. Looking for dinner made easy? Move over meal prep and make way for pre chopped and pre portioned ingredients. Hit the road hard to follow recipes and say hello to easy breezy meals. Peace out pile of dishes and welcome easy cleanup. Well, hello there, Home Chef. Home Chef oven ready meals. Pre chopped and pre portioned recipes without the prep or mess. Get $90 off your first month at homechef.com. Home Chef, delicious meat simple. Buckfire Law. A car accident. The death of a loved one nursing home neglect, medical malpractice, a dog attack. We know just what to do. We know how the legal system works and how to talk to insurance companies. You've been wronged. We'll make it right. Call us, 855-BUCKFIRE. At DraftKings Casino, we give credit where credit is due, in the form of credit. Sign up with DraftKings Casino and get up to $50 in free credit. 
plus a deposit bonus up to $2,000. That's like extra credit in the form of a bonus. Download the DraftKings Casino app or play online today. Get up to $50 in credits to use on any game, plus a deposit bonus up to $2,000. Now, roll credits. Welcome back. Annalise just kind of teed this up quickly, uh, talking about the training that is going to go on, and that's, that's your area now. That's right. There's a $100 million Detroit at Work scholarship fund that the mayor announced uh, at State of the City. Go to DetroitAtWork.com or call us if you've got interest. We've got an opportunity. We'll put a link to it at ClickOnDetroit.com. Thanks so much, gang. Really appreciate it, and thank you as well. Meet the press coming up next. Have a great week. We'll see you next time for Flashpoint.